Moen Arif lights up a cigarette as he walks the streets of Mumbai to pick up some younger guys. He whistles to them as a signal to follow, as he is about to steal a car and needs them to be on the lookout for him. Those younger guys are Mirad and Salman, and they are surprised by how fast Moen breaks into the car. The car's alarm goes off, and they panic until he cuts a wire to shut it. Moen gets into the driver's seat, and Salman rushes to hop in, while Mirad unwillingly sits in the passenger seat. They drive off in the car, loud music blasting from the radio. Mirad reprimands Moen for involving him in this shady affair, because he has no interest in being an outlaw. He turns the radio off, irritated by the music, and claiming that this is nowhere near rap. He rants about how pretentious rap music is these days, boasting about the cars, clothes, wealth, and girls they have on old remixed beats. His friends laugh at his frustration, and joke that it's a good thing that they jacked the car of a pretentious man. Murad wakes up in his home to the voice of his grandmother lecturing his father Shakir not to take away the TV from her. He comes out of his room to see that his father has moved the TV into his room, which he shares with his second wife. Murad's mother, who is Shakir's first wife, expresses her anger at him, as she has nowhere to keep her possessions now. Shakir orders Murad to clean the mess she made, and he silently follows. He feels bad for his mother, who is crying by the sink in their really small house. When he gets out of the house, he intentionally passes by Moen, but he follows him on his scooter. He rides up to Murad and offers him the scooter as a thank you gift. But Murad refuses because he doesn't want stolen gifts. Moen throws him a stash, and Murad doesn't act so righteous this time. He is later seated in the back of a public bus this time, when Safina hops on with her mom. She finds her mother a seat in the full bus, while she stands by herself. She glances over to Murad, who maintains eye contact with her while he's listening to music on his earphones. He types a text on his phone while her mother gets off at the next stop. The man sitting in the back beside Murad also leaves the bus, so Safina moves there to sit next to him. They listen to songs together while sharing Murad's earphones and holding hands. Murad pays attention in classes at college, while Salman is distracted by stalking girls' online profiles on his phone. Murad and Salman are at a local public skate park, where they meet their childhood friend Rishi Sadrani. Rishi just got hired as the assistant manager in a bank, which is why his friends are asking him for a party to celebrate. Murad is joking around with his friends, until he gets a call on his phone that causes his face to tense up. He leaves his friends to go home, where a taxi pulls up in their area. Shakir steps out of the taxi dressed as a groom, with his second newlywed bride, he greets the neighbors, accepting their congratulations for his second marriage, while Murad puts in his earphones to block out all the noise from the world. Shakir makes a spectacle of his new bride in front of the whole neighborhood, while Murad tries to drown himself in rap music. He watches the whole scene of his mother, grandmother, and younger brother serving the young girl Shakir married shamelessly with no regard for his existing family. When everyone in his family goes to bed at night, Murad sits on his rooftop and writes some verses that reflect the desperation of his state and the people who live in this shanty town. The next morning, a local man acting as a tourist guide brings many foreigners to their slum for them to take pictures and get a taste of the gritty India. He brings them to Murad's house, and his grandmother immediately states that she'll charge 500 rupees to let them in. The guide argues that they've already paid for the tickets for this tour, that'll go towards building a new toilet for the community. But Murad's grandmother stands her ground until her conditions are met. Murad retreats to a corner to have his lunch, while the tourists record and observe how every inch of his tiny, overcrowded house is being used by the many people who live here. He notices one of the foreigners wearing a t-shirt and compliments him on it. The tourist explains to him that the man on the t-shirt is Nas who is one of the greatest American rappers of all time until Mirad spits some verses from his songs, leaving the tourist both stunned and impressed. He takes Mirad's picture and leaves. Right after, Shakir comes out of his room with his wife, who stares at Mirad awkwardly. Shakir, who's about to leave for work, notices this and screams at Mirad to wear a shirt. He can no longer have his son roaming around shirtless in the presence of his young wife. Mirad's mother stays silent as his grandmother complains about how the new wife expects them to do her chores too as she left her dishes with them to be washed. Safina is working the desk at her father's clinic when she gets a text from Murad, asking her to meet on the bridge. She takes some money from the register and gives her father an excuse that she's dropping painkillers off at their patient's place. 
She runs to the bridge to see Murad, who appears hurt and tired. She asks him about his new mom, who is like an uninvited mother, and sympathizes with him. She looks around to see if anyone's watching, and gives him a kiss to lighten his mood, which scares him even more, because he doesn't want to get into trouble. Her daring but sweet gesture of love ends up bringing a smile to her face as she walks away. Murad accompanies Shakir in going to the mosque for Friday prayers, where he meets his uncle, who is his mother's brother. He mentions to his uncle during ablution that his mother is very depressed these days. His uncle straight up withdraws himself from the situation, claiming that there's nothing that he can do, as it's their personal matter. Safina quickly walks while her mother tries to keep up with her, as she's dropping her to college. She asks Safina about when she'll get free from college, because they have a wedding to attend. Safina declares that she won't bunk her classes for these useless weddings, as she's in medical school, which requires hard effort. Her mother instantly sets her straight, ordering that she must be home by 1 o'clock to go to her cousin's wedding. They walk to the bus station, where Safina's friend Suhani is waiting for her with Murad in incognito mode. Murad immediately disappears when he hears that Safina's mother is with her, and Suhani greets them as if she was here alone all the time. Suhani and Safina get on the bus, where Safina sits with Murad. He jokes that he has a secret admirer, and she takes his phone to inspect who texted him. She is annoyed by the fact that he replied to the text, and he elaborates that he only did this to find out who did it. Safina appears angry, and hands the phone to Suhani to check the number on Truecaller. She screams at Murad for replying to the text, when Suhani speaks up that a girl named Albina texted him. They all recognize the girl from their neighborhood, and Safina is seething with anger. She gets off the bus and calls Albina to find out where she is. She goes to her workplace and reminds her that everyone knows that she and Murad have been together since they were 13. She grabs Albina by the head and shoves her down the seat for texting Murad, because he's been her boyfriend for nine years. Albina retaliates that they won't make it to the 10th year and pushes Safina back, smooshing her face. They end up in a very physical catfight that leads to Albina ending up in Safina's father's clinic to get her injuries checked out. Both girls' families are at the clinic when Safina's father inquires with Safina about the allegation that she was the first one to hit. Safina says that she's lying and comes up with a story to protect herself. When asked about Murad, she reminds her parents that he used to be in school with her. She adds that Albina sent him inappropriate messages, which is why Murad requested her to make Albina stop. She even makes Albina's father check her phone, and adds that she swore when she tried to reason with her, which is why she landed the first hit. Albina also tells the adults that it's Safina who's had an affair all along, but Safina completely denies it, handing her phone to her parents to check if they don't believe her. Albina's parents apologize for the mess and leave the clinic, while her parents start to doubt her a bit. Later on, Mirad also lectures her on the fact that she shouldn't have hit anyone, she gives her reasoning for it that she can't tolerate anyone coming in between them. But he already knows that her possessiveness will make her do these things again if she feels threatened by any girl at all. There's a festival at Murad's college, and Safina comes over to attend too. They listen to a girl performing a soulful song, until the audience heckles her so much that she leaves the stage midway. The next performer is Sure, who spots the heckler, claiming that he found the girl boring, which is why she was set off the stage. Shrikant calls out the heckler, promising that he'll sing just for him. An old-school hip-hop beat starts to play, and Sure performs some savage verses that obliterate the heckler. The crowd eats up the performance, and Mirad finds his mind blown at Sure's talent. He's never witnessed rap like this in his country and language before, so he immediately rushes downstairs to get closer to the stage. He becomes Sure's fan in an instant, and starts following him on social media too. He is with his friends when they notice Moen doing a shady deal at the park with some guys. They laugh at him for all the illegal business ventures he tries out in hopes of getting rich. Mirad gets a call from home, because his father is in the hospital as he busted his leg. His boss has already paid the hospital bill, but it looks like it'll take him a few months to heal. So Shakir requests his boss to let Mirad fill in for him until he gets better. Mirad and Salman exchange looks, as it's demeaning for him because he never thought he'd end up being someone's driver. Later that night, Murad's parents argue, because his mother had plans to get him an office job, which is why he's being educated. But Shakir argues that drivers are dime a dozen these days, 
and he could have lost his job, as it's already very difficult for Muslims to get employed these days. His mother is concerned that Murad might fail his exams because of this job, but Shakir demands for his son to manage both, as he's invested in his education and deserves to be paid back one day. The next day, Murad is about to leave for work when Shakir gives him clear instructions to open and shut the door for the woman he's about to drive, not talk to her unnecessarily, and drive smoothly. His second wife drops Murad off at the employer's house, which is huge. Murad is told to wait in the car park, and only enter the house when asked to do so. Murad is in awe of his boss's wealth, and how much of it he's never had and probably never will. Murad hangs out with Safina and his friends, as he has night duty tonight. Safina makes fun of Salman, who blurts out that he finds her attractive, and everyone laughs at him for being so embarrassed. Safina and Murad make out in a secret spot, and she gives him her iPad, despite his refusal. This is because he will be doing a lot of night shifts now, and will need to stay up, so he can watch a movie online. He mentions that he'll never be able to give her such costly things, but all she wants from him is to let her be herself, which he always supports. When Safina comes home that night, her mother scolds her for coming so late, even though she was at Suhani's house. Safina lies to her parents, pretending that she forgot her iPad in the rickshaw and ran around to find it. She acts very sad and stressed in front of her father, so he agrees to buy her a new one. Murad is doing his night duty as a driver where some rich parents lecture their daughter to go for advanced studies instead of working. They're talking in English, so they assume that he can't understand them. But he knows perfectly that they're using him as an example to teach their daughter that she doesn't want to end up on a level as low as him. Afterward, he waits in the car and watches people his age having the time of their lives at the party without a care in the world. The disparity between him and them has never felt more clear to him than now. He mutters to himself that his time will come, and some verses come to him like a premonition, so he writes them down in his phone. The next morning, he sees on social media that Shur has posted about a jamming session happening nearby, where anyone can come to showcase their talent. He goes there and sees really talented artists performing. He finds Shur and walks up to him, complimenting his performance at the college. He introduces himself to Shur and shows him the lines he wrote. Murad mentions that Shur can use these lines in his rap if he likes them, but Shur responds that he writes his own songs. However, this is Murad's story to tell, so he should narrate it himself, but he's too shy to perform. Yet, Shur pushes him to the open mic regardless of his reluctance. With some time, Murad catches the beat and reads out the lines he wrote last night, which earns him a lot of applause from the audience. He later joins Shur and his crew to grab a bite, and really enjoys their vibe. That night, he sits down at Safina's building and calls her on the phone, which brings her to the window. Now that he can see her, he shares the amazing day he had with her via phone call. She has big dreams and inspires him to pursue his dreams too, as fearlessly as her. He makes plans to see her at the bus stop the next day, as he has to go home now. Next, Murad witnesses a rap battle, and is still impressed by Shur's skills when he throws him into the game. Murad is smiling from the excitement until his opponent wipes the floor with him, taking a dig at the fake logo on his shirt, and his attachment with Shur. Murad fails to give a comeback, and leaves the circle while the crowd chants against him. Later, Shur teaches him that rap battles are even more brutal than what happened earlier. He claims that those rappers were just big mouths, and Murad should focus on his experiences, instead of feeling inferior about what he lacks. This conversation drives Murad to motivate himself and push himself towards greatness. That night, the woman he drives home cries on the way from the club, probably because she got her heart broken. He empathizes with her in his heart, but it's not his standing to show concern to her. He writes some lines he thinks of that night on his iPad. One day, he picks up Sher from his house and learns that he comes from humble beginnings just like him. His father is a drunkard, and his mother ran away many years ago. He shows his recordings to Sher, who thinks that he's a little off-tempo. Murad has poetry and just needs rhythm, after which they'll record his song in a studio, make a music video for it, and put it on YouTube. Murad works under Sher's guidance to finalize his song, and Safina is there in the studio to support him at the recording. The music video for Murad's song has been edited now, and Sher thinks that he needs a new and cool stage name for his rapper alias. He got his name Sher from his mother, who used to call him that, and he feels like a lion too. 
Murad comments that he's just a guy from a shanty street, which earns him the name of Gully Boy. He gets a medical certificate from Safina, because he's been missing a lot of his classes at college. Safina supports him, but wants him to hold his music until he graduates, as he's in the final year. Salman's notes are of no use to him, and he's sure that he's going to fail the exams now. Murad finds a negative comment on his video from a user named Sky, and Sure engages in a chat with them. They listen to Sky's beats and make plans to meet. Mirad's mother makes arrangements with her brother to get him a job interview in the sales department of a company. Shakir's second wife enjoys Mirad's new song, but when he gets to know about this, he hits Mirad for wasting his time on futile activities. He forbids Mirad from rapping. Sure gets him entry at an underground rap event, where they meet Sky, who turns out to be a girl. She is a music student at Berkeley, and gets Mirad and Sure to collaborate with her on a song whose copyrights will be shared among them all. This makes Murad late for his meeting with Safina, but she shares the happy news with her. Safina doesn't approve of him working with a girl and compromising his studies, but doesn't get into a fight. Things don't change much at home, but Murad begins to see a bright future for himself. His music video is shot in his hood and starts to get a lot of likes. One day, he catches Moen using kids to be his dealers and confronts him about it. Moen puts him in his place and doesn't stop his shady dealings. Murad shows his music video to his mother, who wants him to complete his studies, get a job, and then make music. He gets a call on his phone and sends his mom away coyly. He picks it up and responds to Sky, who drives him around the city with some of her friends to vandalize and make statements. Murad has never had fun like this before, and likes how free and relaxed Sky is. They end up alone in her car, smoking. She mentions that money will follow if he follows his passion. They end up kissing in her car till late at night. The next morning, Mirad sleeps in while Safina waits for him at the bus stop. She calls him, and he finally picks up. She excitedly informs him that she got permission to attend the success party for his video tomorrow morning, but he isn't so thrilled. Now that he recalls last night with Sky, he lies to her about where he was last night, and she senses it in his tone. He's with his friends that night and avoids Sky's calls. He and Sure are thrilled to see an advertisement that says that Nas is coming to perform in Mumbai. There's a rap tournament happening, and the winner will get to open for Nas and win 10 million. Mirad decides to learn to do battle raps for this opportunity. Safina is at Mirad's success party, where she tells Salman about the excuse she made at home to be able to come here. She overhears Sky talking about the night she went out with Mirad, and feels really blindsided. She loses her temper even more when she watches Sky take Murad aside and whisper to him. She publicly interrogates him and commands Sky to shut up when she tries to speak on his behalf. She walks away from Murad, but Sky follows her, wanting to talk. Furious, Safina smashes a beer bottle on her head, which lands them in the police station. Sky doesn't press any charges, but Safina gets in trouble with her parents for breaking their trust. Her rebellion also earns her some slaps from her strict mother, and Mirad also breaks up with her, for getting violent and not being able to handle the drama. He later admits to Moen that he's ignoring her because he can't confess to her about his cheating. Moen reprimands him on this, but that doesn't stop Mirad from going to Sky's house to make more music with her. She kisses him again, but he backs off this time because he realizes that his life is incomplete without Safina. Meanwhile, Safina's parents only let her continue her studies on the condition that she start meeting suitors for marriage proposals. Sure trains Murad for rap battles, and he ends up fighting back against his father for hitting his mother. He moves out of that home with his mother and brother. They go to his uncle's house, who offers them no help whatsoever. He goes to Moen's house, where he's using homeless children to rap for him. Murad fights him, but also ends up confiding in him about his troubles. He needs money, so he starts stealing cars with Moen to get his family a place to live. He also enters the rap competition and starts working a day job. Safina chooses a suitor, who is none other than Salman, because she knows that'll get Murad's attention. Meanwhile, Murad ditches his job to enter the contest. While Safina pursues the prospect of getting married to Salman, Murad ends up in the finals, and Salman conveys Safina's tactic to him. He finally calls Safina and climbs up into her bathroom through the window. They make up and continue to support each other in their dreams. When he comes home that day, Mirad finds Shakir there, who pressures him to go back to his job. 
But Murad makes it clear that he knows his worth now and won't back off from his dream. Moen gets arrested, and Murad volunteers to testify about his involvement in the robbery too. But Moen doesn't let him ruin his life and wishes him luck in the contest. Murad knows that there are many people counting on him now, so he goes to the finals. Safina, Shur, Salman, Rishi, and Sky are all there to support him, and he performs his piece with the catchphrase, My time will come. Everyone loves the song and he wins. All ends well as he posts Moen's bail, makes his family and hood proud, and marries Safina, right after opening for the legendary rapper Naz at his Mumbai concert.